this story happened in my senior year of high school. Prior to this experience, I had done mushrooms three times. Two of those experiences were pretty good, one was kinda bad. However, those could be for another day. This trip, in which I 100% believed I was going to get murdered and die, is very long. It was utterly tragic, but years later, I can see the humor in it. So brace yourself for the story of the man I will call M that I met at the barter fair. This story takes place at somewhere called the barter fair. For those unaware of what that is, it's basically a big hippie festival where you trade things for drugs, to put it loosely. It's a three-day weekend experience. There's live music, fire dancing, and it's really fun. I still highly recommend going to one of these if you can. We'll skip over my backstory, and we will start in the gates outside of the barter fair. I will be introducing characters as we go through the story as they become more important. But for now, the picture is a group of teenagers, six in total, that are on the side of the highway, prepping their vehicles for three of the teenagers to be snuck into the fair. A truck pulls up with a six-year-old hippie named M, wearing a Grateful Dead t-shirt with his service dog Snoopy. He hops out of the vehicle and asks us the whereabouts of the hippie fair. He pulls out a thing of fireball accompanied with a bowl of freshly loaded weed, later revealed to be grown by himself. This character display was the introduction to the weirdness ahead that Barter Fair is known for. Our group had no time for questions. Who is this guy? Where does he come from? What does he want with a group of teenagers? Hindsight is 2020, and later, Marty would reveal that he goes to Barter Fair every year. How come then would he need to ask a group of teenagers the whereabouts of said fair? Nevertheless, our vehicle and a barter fair were prepped and primed and ready to go. Thoughts of this being the only encounter with M would be shortly questioned. The transfer into the fair was a success, and as the group started to set up camp, M rolled up asking if he could camp with us. No group vote was needed, as M pulled in anyways, ready to hitch up. The group shrugged it off and didn't think much of it. Fast forward to a few hours later, two of my friends were giggling after they had dropped acid and I felt left out. Shortly before this point, a man with a big top hat had waltzed into our camp and was selling eighths of shrooms. I took one look at these bad boys and saw that the bag had Dr. Strange on them. Who could I trust more to give me Strange than the doctor himself? Back to my two friends giggling as they were on the come up. I was half an eighth down eating a bag of barbecue potato chips, not feeling strange. My very wise friend named A suggested I eat the whole thing you pussy. So as you do, I promptly ate the whole thing. Ten minutes later we wanted to walk around and explore the fair and I wasn't feeling strange. This fair is on an Indian reservation, so no federal laws apply, meaning that I found myself at a one dollar one dab booth, paying extra for a globber. As soon as I lifted my head up from the dab rig, it all hit me like a fucking train. I was thrown into fast motion, as if you were passing an unfortunate sex scene in a movie you chose to watch with your parents. I truly was moving in fast motion, crushing A's hand, sprinting back to camp. I was in a state of panic, as if I had become an infant taken away from my mommy. To me, the simulation had truly broken. Being in a computer is putting it lightly. Reality was shifting diagonally with me in the center. I had thrown the universe off course, as if it wasn't expecting me to get this loaded. It didn't know how to respond, it glitched out and shattered in front of me, throwing once a man into the fragment of space was all it could do at this point. This was the strange I was prescribed. I knew everything, all the universe's secrets. I knew that when we died, it was going to be fucking awesome and there was nothing to worry about. Ecstasy and euphoria were the only feelings I had at this point. Screaming in people's faces, telling them that they were going to die and it's going to be fucking awesome. We had finally made it back to the camp, and I was truly tripping. As an artist, I instinctively grabbed my sketchbook and went to town. 
Patterns were flowing out of me. The lead of my pencil would become dull, signifying its death. I would stare at it and feel death pulling me in. I would put it down, then grab the same pencil, perfectly sharpened, and get back to it. All of this while hearing from within me the simple fact of, life is a cycle, over and over and over again. We all die to be born again. Me, my sketchbook, and the campfire, transported into a desert to represent the sands of time. I'm not sure, but at this point, was peak strange. This moment of grandeur would be short-lived, however, as our antagonist, M, came into frame. Anyone who's done shrooms knows you can feel people, sense what they're thinking of, and instinctively know their intentions. M, at this point, had sat right next to me, and I felt darkness. I felt that M wanted to rape me, to torture me, to throw me in his truck, and head back to his farm, never to be seen again. Dramatic, yes. Exaggerating, no. This fucked me up. Later accounts of the night tell me that my eyes were completely black at this point. I could hear my friends, but I couldn't see them. I was trapped in M's gaze. He was going off on all kinds of weird shit. Aliens in the universe, that kind of stuff. One of the things he said was everything in the universe could fit into the size of an atom, putting up his finger and pointing. I felt that I was being sucked into his finger, the same kind of suction I felt from the pencil. I got up, went to my tent, and grabbed a big hunting knife and hid it under my blanket. I humorously dropped it for everyone to see. I sat further away from M, but this didn't stop him from inching closer. I mustered up the courage to call him out. I looked him in the face and I said, Don't try it. I know what you're gonna do. Don't you dare try it. Clenching my knife in my hands, my only salvation from this demon. He began chuckling and laughing. Why? Well, probably because I was salivating from the mouth, so my words had an intense lisp as whatever strain of mushroom I took was probably more poisonous than others. However, his laugh was still sinister. Then the dog Snoopy came and laid on my blanket. I looked down at the dog, then back up at M. With his evil grin and chuckling, he said word for word, Don't worry, the dog is in on it too. This ignited a full-on panic attack. I sprung up, leaving my knife and blanket, and sat next to my friend E, who was completely sober and an angel. I told her that I was tripping out. She didn't need my confirmation though, she could clearly tell. She gave me a rock, telling me as if I were a child to rub the rock to make me feel better to distract me. I rubbed that rock to dust. There was a giant gash in my thumb the next day. This is when things went from bad to worse for me. M had pulled out a laser pointer, bright green and was shining across the fair. I have to admit, it was pretty cool in my tripped out state. This was overshadowed when M announced that he had another laser, pulling out a bright light and shining in my eyes. For some unknown reason, this triggered a memory, real or not, that's to be debated. A memory of me listening to a podcast in which Joe Rogan and someone else were discussing laser technology the CIA had created and where you shine it into the victim's eyes, causing them to die within 12 hours. Like I said, real or not, not sure to this day, I haven't resurfaced the episode, so who knows. However, this did not stop me from absolutely shitting my pants. You have to understand, this wasn't a question, it was more of a prophecy. I was going to die, no doubts in my mind. This was it. Not knowing what to do, I freaked out. The idea of dying was not on my agenda for the weekend. In my state, Everything I looked at was sucking me in as mentioned previously. This time, it became more intense. Death was everywhere I looked, sucking me in. M would stroke the fire, causing embers to go into the sky. The little tiny points were his method of killing me in my head. I couldn't escape it. This man was on a mission to kill me. I freaked out screaming to everyone that I was going to die. 
M has bad vibes, as I elegantly put it, and I need to go to a hospital. No one of course believes me, and why would they? Though to me, it sounded like they knew I was going to die, and they knew that there is nothing that they can do, if that makes sense. They all knew that it was over for me, and they didn't know how to tell me. Enter C. C was a hardcore hippie, such a good guy in my experience with him prior to this. He picked me up and told me, let's go for a walk. C began trying to comfort me by saying things such as, just accept it, embrace it, it'll be all over soon, no joke. These were not the things I wanted to hear. He also mentioned I had gypsy tears, not sure what that means, but you could guess it did not sound good in my head. If anyone knows what he's talking about, leave a comment. I started to yell at him, getting in his face yelling at him. He is much bigger than me and could take me down easily, but he was a trooper through my schizophrenic episode. We ended up at a drum circle where I embarrassed him by stating, I see a red dot, they're here to kill me, and the endless questioning of gypsy tears. This being heard by multiple people who were being lunged at by a scrawny white kid halfway on the planet. It prompted C, who had enough of the public humiliation, to take me off to a small field where he sat me down in which we meditated, calming me down to a point of questioning if I was actually really going to die. Not fully convinced, but coming down from my state of existential dread, we made our way back to camp where only A was awake. C left to go do peyote or something. A and I stayed up for the rest of the night, talking and walking around the fair, meeting cool people, and having a genuinely good time. The next day, I woke up, alive, but with the worst psychological hangover, questioning everything and thinking deeply. M made us breakfast, where I'm 90% convinced I ate human meat. The meat was beat down to be thin as paper and tasted like nothing I've ever had. Later that day, I overheard M say to E, who was a gorgeous girl, You have such luscious skin. All that from M definitely had me looking over my shoulder all day. However, I eventually realized the ridiculousness of my paranoia. In all honesty, looking back, he was just a sad old hippie wanting some friends and me, being who I am, an eighth of shrooms down, interpreted him as life-threatening. It would come to my attention that he was harmless by the fact that he took a bunch of acid and got to a point where me and C had to carry him to his truck because he was crying to his mom that he didn't want to go to school. He even gave me a rock with dots all over it, stating it was an apology. I accepted the apology by throwing it off a cliff and good wishes later on our way home. No way I was keeping that. I have not been to Barter Fair since, and I tried shrooms three months later and had a similar experience. I am not writing off psychedelics as bad as my experiences have been. They have completely changed who I am for the better. Almost four years later, I could say that I laugh more writing this story than having anxiety. I still think about it a lot. Especially those points where the universe was breaking and I was forced to question if any of this was real. P.S. I don't think we live in a simulation. I believe in the broad umbrella of spirituality. This story only happened a month ago and I'm still dealing with the mental fallout of the whole ordeal. I am 18 years old, and despite having only taken my first bong hit less than a year ago, I've tried well over a dozen substances of every kind, except for opiates. Anyway, my friend and I were finally chilling and playing video games in my room. We didn't plan to take shrooms that night, which was probably a part of the problem. But I had some ground up and asked him if he wanted to do some since everyone in the house was now asleep. He said sure and I was hyped despite having well over an ounce to myself. I would only taken shrooms a handful of times before at relatively low doses because I didn't trust myself to not make a scene while tripping in front of my family. We weighed them out on a gram scale and put around 1.5 G's in a shot glass with ginger beer 
thinking its already harsh taste would eliminate the gross taste of the mushroom powder. We only wanted a mild experience anyway, seeing funny colors and visuals while playing video games, but I got more than I bargained for. We downed the liquid, and the taste was so much worse, so much so, that I accidentally gagged and spit some out, wasting pretty much my entire shot. So stupidly, I filled up another, and this time, I was able to stomach it, though it was very shitty. We went back upstairs and put on Chappie, a movie with which I am very familiar with and enjoy. It hits so fast, way faster and much harder than eating them raw or the capsules. We turned off the lights and sat down. Behind my TV was a small Christmas tree at the time, with red, green, and white lights. Around 15 minutes in, I began feeling extremely not like myself, and the usual feeling of being very light hit me, and although I was deathly nauseous, all I wanted to do was run around. Although I wasn't feeling physically well at the time, mentally I was excited and awaiting more of its effects, as already this was the most intense I've tripped off of anything. The next moment, it felt as though my FOV was turned up to 200%. I could see all around me like a fisheye lens and I looked at my friend and started laughing hysterically. I was feeling it and feeling good. At one point, I picked up my phone and tried to swipe up, but my hand went all the way past my screen. My depth perception was screwed. We continued the movie and at some point, I decided to put one AirPod in and let my playlist play. I looked at my walls, which are angled downwards as I sleep in the attic, and saw the lights from the Christmas tree warping and turning into these jagged, mine-like lines that marched across my white walls. I thought it was insanely cool, but asked my friend to turn on the lights for a second as I was too nauseous and didn't want to risk it turning into a bad trip. He got up and turned them on and I saw his hair, which is sort of like the Karen haircut turn into like a wave, twirling and twisting in a circle. I didn't see any other cool visuals, as my room is mostly white in the light anyway, so I asked him to turn them back off. And when he did, the cool green and red Mayan lines on my walls returned. Sometime after that, I closed my eyes for a few seconds, or maybe a minute, I'm not sure, and saw these blue and red colored mud brick houses, like the ones you'd see in ancient Egypt, and felt an intense sense of childhood and love for my family. I can't really explain it, but this was the best I felt before I crashed completely. I told my friend about my visions, and as the movie ended, we talked about its message of consciousness, and my words felt so weird to physically say, and I got obsessed with the thought that words literally mean nothing, and they're just any other sounds that we can make, like screeching or whistling. That kind of signaled the beginning of my bad mindset, because I became terrified of this concept for some reason, thinking that words really do mean nothing, and I began to have a much harder time thinking. He then decided to put on Kung Fu Panda, because he thought it would be insane to watch while tripping because of its vibrant color palette and designs. So he put it on, and I returned to a better mindset as we watched it in silence. However, over time, I grew too euphoric again, and I began laughing at everything. I also became obsessed with checking the time, and was terrified to see what felt like 10 minutes was literally around a single minute. With one of the scenes from the movie, I began laughing hysterically, and so did my friend. So much so, that the time distortion made me believe I had been laughing for way too long, and I began to question myself. Then panic, as I felt like I couldn't move enough air into my lungs to replenish the amount I'd lost while laughing. This crescendoed into me thinking I literally couldn't breathe, as the trip peaked at only about 2 hours in. It was now only 1am. My friend had his pen on him, which he had assured me we could use as an escape in case the trip got bad, as the 85% THC cards make me dumb, sleepy, and happy. At one point, it got so wild that I said, fuck it, let me take a hit, and reached across what seemed like a thousand miles to grab it. At this point, 
I realized I was tripping way too hard as I truly felt synesthesia for the first time. I felt the physical tide of time moving across my skin as my body felt like it was rapidly changing shape and size. Time and time again, I had no sense of where I was or really even who I was, an animal struggling with itself for eternity. I tried to take a pull from the pen, but I physically felt the vapors entering my lungs and it freaked me out so much, I coughed it out and gagged, falling off the couch and laying on the floor. Thankfully, I didn't actually throw up. My feet seized up and my toes were paralyzed in a curling type pose, my fingers freezing the same way. Everything I touched felt so incredibly alien, I just wanted to be floating. My friend was freaking out at this point too, but not because of the shrooms, but because of me. He had smoked before the trip and I hadn't, that might have been part of it. But it also could have been because my body also absorbed the shrooms before I spit them out the first time. At this time, the music playing in my ear hit a Kanye song, which I was very familiar with and have good memories with as my friend showed it to me. But it became slow, distorted, and demonic sounding. I ripped out my AirPod and threw it across the room, probably making a commotion, but I didn't really care. He put on YouTube and tried to find something calming, but the first video I saw when I glanced at the TV was a demon laughing, and the fucking preview feature played the video and showed the Baphomet-like figure laughing in this deep and terrifying voice. I'm certain this wasn't a hallucination, but what terrible timing, right? My black cat was still laying on my bed, and I saw her when I got back up to get on the bed. Her ears were surrounded by this black aura and I imagined her to be a hellish creature too. I laid down on my bed and curled up in a fetal position. The air felt cold and toxic to be inhaling, and I still felt like I couldn't breathe. Everything felt like it was turning. My body felt like just a variable that was constantly being changed, and my senses were being fucked and swapped every second. I felt as if I was changing dimensions every moment and not even my blankets were safe as they felt like they were moving and slithering like snakes. And even though I owned a pet snake in the past and am not in any way scared of them, the thought of my blankets moving on their own was terrifying, so I kept changing positions, never being comfortable. My hands and feet specifically were paralyzed, stuck in a state in which it was very difficult to control them, although not impossible. I had read many trip reports and had never heard of this effect nor experienced it myself, so it was another cause for panic. I spent four hours in my personal hell, most of it I thankfully can't remember. I'd be thinking about something, mostly memories of my childhood, and then it would be quickly changed to something terrible, usually with a dark blue and fluid feel to it all. If you've never taken psychedelics before, this may not make sense but everything had a distinct color feel to it all. Physically, I felt myself in a fast-moving stream, similar in composition and look, like a blue and green TV static, moving through time as if I was a passenger. I couldn't tell if opening my eyes or keeping them closed was better, as each came with their own sets of terrors. Opening my eyes, everything around me seemed to be closing in on me, like the walls were about to crush me, the poster on my wall had the person on it looking down on me, and although I thought they felt pity for me, they were unable to do anything and observed me suffering like one observes a creature in the wild being killed. Closing my eyes was somewhat worse, and keeping them closed for too long would make me forget where I am and who I was, and made me feel like I'm in the void and that I never existed and never will. This was all happening while I was struggling to breathe. I was trying to ground myself by thinking of my loved ones and my own memories, but it felt like these memories were like sand being swept away by a tidal wave of pure mental fuckery and insanity. Telling myself I was tripping didn't help as my body didn't even feel grounded, like I've had bad experiences off of weed brownies before, and even though I was incredibly high and scared, I was still able to say it was all in my head because I still felt human. 
Not this time. I felt like a meat bag, and I was shown without my consent. All my senses were fake, and could be manipulated any time. I was so scared for my own health. I genuinely considered going outside in below freezing temperatures and running to the hospital, or if not, driving. Both terrible ideas I know now, but I cannot explain the amount of torture I felt in those four hours. I felt as if I was dying, partly physically, but mainly mentally and emotionally, my mind and spirit being ripped apart by forces beyond my control and my understanding. Eventually, I came down and I realized my friend had passed out on the couch and the room was all dark. I walked downstairs to piss and I looked out the bathroom window as I saw the sun rising over my front yard, covered in snow. My mind had been thoroughly raped and I really felt like a new chapter in my life had been forced upon me. I wasn't myself for weeks, irritable, flying into fits of rage which my family or friends had never seen before. I told them what happened and threw the powder away. I've mostly recovered now, but like any trauma, it never fades. I'm not the same person I was two months ago, and I never will be. I've gained a newfound appreciation for weed and quit my expensive stimulant habits after this. I've also cut toxic people out of my life since then and can actually stand up for myself, something I had trouble with before. In a way, I feel like I'm traumatized, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't have any benefits. This is not a party drug to take willy-nilly. If I'm going to be taking this or any other psychedelic again, I'm going to a guided ceremony or session. I know this is long, but I had to get all my experiences onto some sort of platform so my mind can sort of let go. Funnily enough, I found tales from the trip the day after this happened and I think the channel is great. Thanks for listening to my horrifying experience. If you're enjoying this video so far, please be sure to give it a like and comment down below your craziest shroom experience. I have one on my channel called My Nightmare Shroom Trip Out of Hell or something like that, I forgot. So go check that one out. It really changed my perception of life for better or for worse. Also, subscribe if you haven't already. If you're enjoying this video, then you'll definitely enjoy my other videos. Also, follow me on Instagram at the Trip Keeper if you haven't already. I post a bunch of shit on there daily, and you can keep updated with my life. Alright, let's get to the next story. I'm going to do my best to describe this experience, but as with any trip, our experiences often surpass our ability to articulate them, so please bear with me. It was midsummer 2020. My friends and I had made plans to meet up and trip. I wanted to have other people around, as this was only my second time tripping on shrooms, and my third time tripping in general. I was very much a rookie. We had planned to meet in a meadow some ways outside of town. It had a big sandy creek sneaking its way through the middle and was boxed in by mountains on all sides. It was a place I was very familiar with. It was quiet and peaceful and away from prying eyes. The perfect place to commune with the mushroom gods. I arrived about six hours before the rest of the troop of stoners that were joining me. Not by design. They were notorious for it and almost always arrived late due to some unforeseen calamity. Today was no exception. I set up my blanket on the sandy beach, threw a lawn chair about knee deep in the creek, and waited for them to arrive, as I didn't want someone else to come across our spot and take it for themselves. I had with me a 5 gram bag of golden teachers, a 5.5 gram of albinos, and about 3 grams of sour diesel to help with the anxiety of tripping. The time was about 11 am. I waited until about 11.45 for them to arrive but patience has never been my strong suit. So shortly thereafter, I gave up and decided I would start my trip. As I said earlier, I was an amateur and very naive. I had no experience measuring out doses and I had no scale, but I figured that one bag, five grams, seemed like a reasonable amount. 
so I crunched them down and washed the taste out of my mouth with some orange juice, as I had been told it would make my trip better. About 15 minutes passed, and in my boredom, I decided I wanted to have a harder trip than my previous. In hindsight, I know that my first trip had been about 2.5 grams, so in my recklessness, I ate the other 5.5 gram bag, sat in the creek, and waited. I hadn't eaten anything that day, so about 10 minutes later, I began to notice the restlessness and anxiety of the come up. About 10 minutes after that, my first visuals in the form of intricate geometric patterns in the sand, my visuals quickly gaining intensity from there, the tall green grass around me shifting into something that resembled peacock tail feathers, complete with eyelets and everything. The trees swayed and flowed up the sides of the mountains like green fire. The water flowing through the creek looked like glass, breaking and shifting into infinite fractals. The wind moving through the grass sounded like whispers of a crowd, speaking a language dead to the world. Overstimulated and on the verge of a panic attack, I decided I would go for a short walk and smoke some of the bud I had brought with me to calm down. Oh, what a mistake that was. The world began to spin. The visuals became so intense that it was almost painful to behold, and my surroundings were suddenly unfamiliar to me. I was no longer in the place that I started my trip. I sat down in the sand, closed my eyes for a moment or two, then opened them and inspected my surroundings, hoping to distinguish something recognizable through the distortion to no avail. I repeated this process I don't even know how many times. The concept of mathematics of even the simplest form was incomprehensible. The passage of time was non-existent. At some point, I stopped opening my eyes. I sat in a void, in oppressive darkness, for some unknown amount of time. I had no perception of anything, except for a vibration of energy on all parts of my being. But not in the sense of arms and legs. I don't know how to explain it. I suppose I could call it my soul. This feeling of energy steadily increased in the darkness, until suddenly, there was an explosion of lights and color. Infinite fractals of indescribable detail flying past my periphery. The vibration had also increased in intensity, and I could hear it, like one long drawn out thunderclap. I witnessed the birth of the universe. I watched stars emerge from nebulas and galaxies form, rip each other apart and form again. I watched the flow of energy move about, swirl and whip into everything that is and everything that will be. And then, as fast as it all started, it was gone again, and I found myself in the void once more. After some time, a single pinprick of light appeared and grew, twisting and contorting ribbons of deep blues and purples into an entity that closely resembled the Vitruvian man, made entirely of fractals. He didn't speak, but I could understand him perfectly, and he told me that I was everything and nothing permanent and ephemeral, lying and dying, celestial. And then I opened my eyes, still tripping balls and too overwhelmed to move. I laid in the sand, staring at the now evening sky and tried to make sense of everything that I just bore witness to. After some time, I turned my head and saw my friends some 150 feet up the beach around a fire. After talking to them post trip, they arrived about five hours after I initially ate my mushrooms, found the two empty bags and me laying in the sand with my eyes closed, put two and two together and decided to let me ride the lightning on my own. I didn't fully come down until almost 1 a.m., 12 hours after dosing. I've had many powerful trips since on acid, DMT, MDMA, spice, etc. But I still think about this one almost daily I think about what the Vitruvian entity told me, and I believe it was referring to my soul. Trip responsibly, Psychonauts. November of 2019, I was 17 and enjoying what I now know were the last couple months of my senior year. I'd been taking pretty hearty dosages of LSD and mushrooms, 
with one pleasant experience with Salvia. It had seemed that after my 7 gram hippie flip, I felt that I was invincible in regards to psychedelics. Like every other confident psychedelic crusader in these stories, I was dead wrong. My best friend in high school had gotten expelled sophomore year for possession of over an ounce of psilocybin mushrooms. For the sake of this story, we will call him Vince. And obviously, he was my supply for these types of drugs. My parents leave for Thanksgiving weekend because of my brother's soccer tournament in Vegas. It was great. After my party the first night, I had just my close friends over the night after. Vince comes over and he has slightly more than an ounce on him. A couple of my friends buy a couple of grams off of him to trip at my place. No more than three grams for each person. We'll call them John and Adam. Without hesitation, I ask for 12 grams and he gives me a generous discount. Without hesitation, he allows me to inject it all at once. We were practically brothers at this point. I had heard from a classmate that if you brew the mushrooms into a tea with lemon, it doesn't hit the stomach as strong, which was an issue I was facing during my hippie flip. About 15 minutes after ingestion, the body high began to kick in, and strong, like really strong. This caught me off guard. I dismiss whatever conversation was going on and head to my couch. My girlfriend at the time shows up and sees me in a state of panic and extreme discomfort. All my friends surround me as I'm lying down and this just freaks me out. I bolt upstairs and head straight for my toilet. I begin dry heaving into my toilet bowl, yet nothing is coming out. Then my room begins to take a wave effect, like everything is made out of water and someone is throwing pebbles into it. I then look at my toilet bowl and am faced with rainbowic colors and kaleidoscopes. I lay down in my bed of dirty laundry and begin to face this overwhelming feeling of death and anxiety. The sensation from the body high as well as the visuals were distracting me from my thoughts. I crawled to bed as to what I can describe as running through a crowded nightclub off MDMA, but not in a good way. I'm in bed now, but my closet light is on. I begin to hear crackles and before my eyes, my closet had started to burn. That's the last thing I remember before leaving reality. Time immediately stops, everything stops. I close my eyes and when I open them, I am in a completely different room. All I see are ancient, possibly Egyptian hieroglyphs. Then I feel the sensation of falling, like going down a steep drop on a roller coaster. I see faces of beings which I can't find the right words to describe. I hear talking, but their mouths aren't moving. The scariest part of the experience would be the cut from the children's laughter to children screaming. At that point, I felt I had gone completely psychotic and probably had died off of this trip. Eventually, I came back after feeling like I was being shaken on a waterbed for what felt like forever with crazy psychedelic patterns and ambient noises going on. This is when I began to ferociously vomit rainbow puke into my toilet. I check my phone to see all the text bubbles reading some language I can't understand. Then every letter inflates into a bubble and floats off my screen. The sensation of fear had lingered. I close my eyes wrapped up in a ball, constantly hearing creatures and demons of all sorts around me. I open my eyes and see from what I can make out as worms or maggots crawling under my skin. I begin to scream into my pillow as not to alert anyone and stay in the crouch position until I no longer felt the presence of these creatures. I arrived downstairs to smiles, yet I could not understand a single word my friends were saying. My girlfriend put me to bed and laid with me as I previously told her not to disturb me during the peak of the trip. Every time she hit her nicotine device, her entire arm would turn into smoke and it looked like she was inhaling her arm. I finally came to and hugged my girlfriend like I had faced death. I tell her that I am quitting my drug use, even my addiction to marijuana. Those were both lies. I go downstairs where John and Adam were and I realize that Vince is nowhere to be seen. 
At this point in the night, we had a few friends who were sober. Since they saw my state, they wanted someone to watch the house. They drove us around my neighborhood to find Vince, no luck. Eventually, I go outside to smoke a blunt and hear rustling behind my backyard fence, which is just mountainous woods. I then find Vince behind my fence, mumbling incoherent gibberish. We bring him inside, and as he slowly comes to, he begins to go on about how he is dead, and he is in the afterlife. He aggressively grabs me, and tells me to prove to him that he is not dead. He begins pacing back and forth, giving us a lesson on how he knows for certain he has passed away. Vince begins talking to people who weren't there. At that point, I call one of my other tripping buddies, whose sister has a prescription for Xanax, providing us enough for my friends and I to kill the dreadful come down and enough to put Vince to sleep. That was my last experience with mushrooms, but hopefully I can approach it soon with a new perspective.